The Endangered Species Act was passed by Congress to protect our symbols of wilderness, the bald eagles and the grizzly bears. The Talago Dam debate was the first true test of this act and proved that the Endangered Species Act actually protects all species, even this one little fish, the snail darter. The Tennessee Valley Authority, or the TVA, started in 1933. TVA's first mission was to create fertilizer for the World War II effort and to create power for the development of the atomic bomb. Over time, TVA became the region's most famous dam building agency. By 1948, TVA built more than three dozen dams. And then, by 1962, the TVA had built more than 65 dams. The agency started building smaller and smaller dams because the TVA was running out of hydroelectric sites for dams. Aubrey Wagner, the general manager, decided that they needed a new mission so they could keep building dams. Their new purpose for building dams was for economic development. TVA condemned property that was going to be flooded and property that was not. They just wanted more land for economic development and for power. In the 1960s, the TVA had no more places to build dams, except for the Little Tennessee River. And one by one by one, the, the, the stretches of the river were, were covered up by dams, 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 dams. This was the 69th one on the river, and, and it, was, it made no sense to build it, but the agency very much wanted to build it. The Little Tennessee Valley, and it was a rich, beautiful valley that was um, dated back to 8000 BC to pre-Indian cultures, Historical. and a very historical area, great farmland. Farmers, townspeople, fishermen, archaeologists, conservationists, Native Americans, and historians were all people who fought the TVA. In 1966, TVA got Congress to give them money to build the Talico Dam, and in 1967, the dam structure was built. The dam itself only cost around $4 million. All the other money went to condemning farmers' land and building roads and bridges. Most of the condemned land would not be flooded. Some homes were being resold by the TVA. TVA was making a new model city called Timberlake Newtown. TVA said that 40,000 people would live in this town and would create 25,000 jobs. These were very high hopes, but not a lot of it came true. The people who were against the dam said that it was just too valuable to destroy for just one more algae-ridden reservoir. It's like trading away an eagle just for another old crow, said Larry Crisp. TVA went on with their plans, trying to finish the project by condemning farms, impounding land, and fighting the local opposition. However, the protests continued. Protested the taking of our farm, 119 acres, um, by eminent domain for the lake. We were not flooded. Our farm was a plateau above the river, and only three of 119 acres were even um, affected. So we had tractor cades, we lobbied in Washington six different times, uh, letter campaigns to congressmen and senators, um, traveled to Nashville to visit the governor. Um, we did everything within our power to protest through the legal routes that were provided. This river was an incredible river, a beautiful river. Uh, and it was a very special habitat. We knew that it had lots of special species in it, uh, even before we knew that the snail darter existed. So you put all those things together, and it was clear that if we had found a law that could protect the habitat and the species and the farmers' farms, and we didn't do it, we would feel that we had really not been um, citizens, that we weren't doing what people are supposed to do. David Etner, a fish biologist, discovered the tiny snow dirter. At that time, he never knew that the tiny fish would solidify the purpose of the Endangered Species Act. 
We were at River Mile 7. We talked to a farmer that I knew down there, a little bit anyway, and he said, yeah, sure, you can park here and go down to the river. And uh, the first fish I saw was uh, looking right down on it. It had those dark saddles, and the only thing that could be there that looked like that would be a sculpin. But it looked a little too slender. So I poked it, and it just hopped off the bottom and swam a foot or so. And, drop down onto the gravel again. That still doesn't look like a sculpin. I've never seen a sculpin that slender. So I just nestled my hands around it, cut my hands around it, and lifted it out of the water. And as soon as I got it out of the water, I, I knew I had something that nobody had ever seen before. It was pretty exciting. And I... The Endangered Species Act says no federal agency shall jeopardize the existence of a species or modify or destroy its critical habitat. People found out that the Talico Dam was clearly violating the Endangered Species Act because of the snail darter in the river. People took this idea to farmers, landowners, and Cherokee Indians about how it violated the Endangered Species Act. The protesters were all together when Asa McCall took off his hat and passed it around to collect money for the lawsuit against the TVA. This historical hat was one of the main factors that started the snail darter debate. We did this with no money. We sold t-shirts. We sold the picture of the snail darter. And that's what paid for my, my flights uh, flying from Tennessee to Washington and back to Tennessee and back to Washington. And then I got fired from Tennessee for bringing this lawsuit. So I went to Michigan. So I was flying from Michigan to Washington. We were doing it all with pennies. Professor Patter and his law student, Hank Hill, argued for saving the snow darter in front of the Supreme Court. Overall, they won. Supreme Court said that the Endangered Species Act applied to this little fish, the snow darter. Unfortunately, Congress, due to pressure from Aubrey Wagner, the TVA and local congressmen then changed the law, excusing the TVA and the Telugu Dam from the Endangered Species Act. President Carter, and he chose not to veto. He had the opportunity, went all the way to the president, and he could have vetoed the project, and he didn't. And um, so that was on September the 25th, September the 26th, but no construction had occurred since January of 77. Construction started once again. And then we were given the deadline of uh, November the 9th. We started moving on the 11th. We lost terribly, and we became a joke. People still talk about, oh, those stupid snail darters. Do you want to stop this or that? On the other hand, in the government, uh, it became clear that the snail darter was not like a bald eagle or a grizzly bear. And yet the law applied. So in the official government, it at least became a, a conscious, uh, enforceable law, where before it hadn't been. Out of it comes a precedent that little people with no power, if they have the facts on their side, and if they have the laws on their side, can go to the highest court in the land and enforce the law. Although the dam was built, the snail darter survives and thrives. There were many successes for the snail darter, but there were also consequences, not for the snail darter, but for the TVA. Though they won, they had to transport and stock the fish into other rivers. The TVA also had to add aerators to some of their dams to increase the oxygen level of the water. Today it is found in at least four other rivers in eastern Tennessee. And more important, the Endangered Species Act continues to protect other species, both large and small. Since this debate, we have learned to save all species and to protect their habitat, in which also helps protect the people around them and their way of life. Had the Endangered Species Act been passed years earlier, chances are the little tea would still be flowing and those farmers, Native Americans, and fishermen would still have their amazing river.